This is the Huawei MatePad Pro 13.2 and all I want to know is, is it better than the iPad Pro? I'm an iPad boar. I'm a sheep, I'm a, was it sheeple, I sheeple, whatever people call us. I'm basically a bit of an Apple fanboy. And that's illustrated perfectly with the iPad Pro because I keep going backwards and forwards with this thing and saying it's too powerful and Apple aren't making enough of it from a pro perspective. But then I say it's the best tablet on the market. If that isn't the definition of an Apple fanboy, I don't know what is. But when Huawei got in touch and said, do you fancy checking out early doors, the brand new MatePad Pro 13.2, I said yes. And you know what? It's taught me something about myself and I think every other Apple fan on the planet. Okay, let's talk about the specs of the MatePad Pro 13.2. It's running the Kirin, I hope that's how you pronounce it, 9000S chip. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM. You can get either 256 or 512 gig of storage. It's running the Harmony OS 4 operating system. It's got a 13.2 inch flexible OLED panel, which is the largest ever for Huawei, with a 2.8K resolution, a 144 hertz refresh rate, P3 color, and 1000 nits of peak brightness. It also has what they call the 3 by 2 productivity ratio, which as you can see is different to the iPad. There's also very thin bezels, which results in a 94% screen to body ratio. There's also a natural light sensing display for enhancing brightness and contrast. In terms of color options, they come in green and black. It's compatible with the brand new third generation M pencil and the smart magnetic keyboard. There's also a Huawei sound system built into this with a five star certification from Switzerland SGS. It's got 88 watt supercharging, which is a complete alien concept for iPad users. And that means it can charge the battery to 85% in 40 minutes and 100% in 65 minutes. In terms of the camera system, there's 13 megapixel and eight megapixel rear cameras and a 16 megapixel front facing camera. The MatePad Pro with 256 gig of storage will be 999 euros and the 512 gig version will be 1,199 euros. The smart magnetic key keyboard is 199 euros and the third generation M pencil is 99 euros. You can pre-order the MatePad Pro in Europe from the 8th of January and deliveries will take place from the 22nd. But what do you get for your money? Okay, I won't beat around the bush. The MatePad Pro is a lovely, lovely tablet. The thing that strikes you immediately, having been a iPad user for many, many years, is just how thin and light it is. And for reference, the MatePad Pro weighs 580 grams and is 5.5 millimeters thin. The 12.9 inch iPad Pro, by comparison, weighs 682 grams and is 6.4 millimeters thick. That's a massive difference and it is really, really obvious. And if you were about those small bezels, which are incredibly thin, really, really stupidly thin, don't be. I know people worry about not having enough to grip onto when it comes to tablets, but I've not had any problem with the MatePad Pro at all. I've never ghost touched anything, and it just feels so much more, dare I say it, Apple, modern than the iPad Pro. That display is just so much more immersive and the fact that it is OLED makes another very big difference. The blacks are incredibly rich, the colors are richer, and yes, it has a notch which doesn't matter because it means it can still have those really thin bezels and have the camera in the correct place. It's also got a 144 hertz refresh rate, which is stupidly quick and doesn't seem to have much of an impact on the battery life. I know some reviewers have done some very in-depth testing with the battery life on this tablet, but I haven't because I can't be bothered. And also it feels to me in everyday use like an iPad when it comes to battery stamina. It's also a very nice design. The only thing I would say is that the rear does pick up smudges very easily, but apart from that, it feels very well put together and very premium, which it should do for the price. This isn't a cheap tablet, but you do feel like you're getting a lot for your money. The next thing to mention is the sound, which is fantastic. The sound on the iPad Pro is also fantastic, but the MatePad Pro does step things up a gear. And the reason for that is the bass. The bass on this thing, given how small and thin and light it is, is incredibly impressive. And that's surprising when Apple is the current king, I think, of making lots of noise, lots of impressive noise from relatively small speaker drivers. It 
It's not theatre level sound, that's impossible, that's just marketing speak. The richness of the bottom end, the punch you get from that, makes this a joy to use if you're just listening to your Spotify playlists or watching movies and that sort of stuff. But it doesn't stop there because we get two very good accessories. The first is the third generation M pencil which has near link technology which apparently boosts the signal between this and the tablet and also reduces latency. It's actually the first stylus to have over 10,000 pressure sensing levels. I have no idea what that means, but it's a very lovely thing to use. It's incredibly responsive, it's got pressure sensitivity, it's the right size. Just like the Apple Pencil, it charges like that, and it has double tap functionality, so you can change to your eraser and back to your pen, whatever you need to do with it. There's not much separating this from the Apple Pencil. They've also nailed the keyboard, which yes, does come in two parts. The only thing I would say about this, it can be a little bit fiddly to put on, so you put this rear part on like that, which snaps in place with magnets. And then the bit that was a bit fiddly when I first started doing it is that you have to attach the keyboard beneath the kickstand and against the tablet like that. And then, well, there it is. The first thing to say is that it does pick up lots of smudges, but then, well, so, do, so does the Magic Keyboard from Apple. And in fact, given the choice between these two, the Huawei Magic, what's it called? The Smart Mag, sorry, Smart Magnetic Keyboard wins. What does matter is a couple of things. The first thing is that you can detach it. So you can have this kickstand enabled rear cover independent of the keyboard and the keyboard still works like this because it's Bluetooth. The other thing that I love about the Huawei keyboard is the typing experience. Sounds fantastic, feels fantastic, the keyboard travel is great, and it has a function key row with an escape key. And the trackpad is very good as well. But let's talk about one sticking point, which is Harmony OS. I won't get into the weeds with this because I don't fully understand it, but from what I do understand, the MatePad Pro is running an open source version of Android and Harmony OS 4 sits on top of it as the user interface. However, if you're expecting something similar to Samsung's version of Android or Honor's version of Android, that isn't the case here. This feels incredibly different to Android. And in fact, it feels really alien. Now one, that isn't a bad thing, I like new tech. There's a, an, an element of discovery with this which is very exciting. However, it is a little bit daunting as well because you find out very quickly that most of the apps that you rely on on iOS or you know, other versions of Android don't seem to be there. They are there, and I'll get to that in a moment, but just, just very quickly, Harmony OS is a lovely thing. I keep saying that, don't I? But this is the whole package is just a lovely thing. It's fast, it's intuitive, there's some really nice multitasking stuff going on, and although Huawei do fill this thing with quite a lot of games and apps and things that you probably don't want out of the box, you can remove that stuff very quickly and make it your own. But that brings me on to the app situation and there's two ways to get apps onto the MatePad Pro. The first one is via the app gallery and this is Huawei's version of the app store and there's loads of stuff on there, tons of apps, tons of games, but you probably won't recognize many of them if you've come from an iPad. This also doesn't have the Google mobile services, the GMS system, so it doesn't have Google's stuff built directly into it, and again, that feels very alien. The good news is that you can get the apps that you rely on, the stuff that you use on your iPad or your iPhone or your Android device, you can find them on the MatePad Pro via something called Petal Search. And Petal Search is basically a, well, it's a search engine, obviously, but it gives you access to apps that you can't find on the Huawei App Gallery. And what you're effectively doing when you install apps through Petal Search is sideloading them on to your MatePad Pro. I know that might sound daunting, a bit geeky, a bit of a faff, but it's not. And in my experience, the apps that I've installed on this via Petal Search, so things like Spotify, Netflix, Google Photos, Instagram, Notion, etc., work 
perfectly. They don't crash, they don't look weird, they just feel like native apps. You don't really lose those apps at all, it's just a, a very different way of, of getting them and installing them. Now, I understand why this might put you off the MatePad Pro. At first, I was a little bit unsure. I, I sat there and thought, oh no, I need to I need to do this kind of manual search and install of apps. You know, what, what's that all about? I'm used to the app store on the iPad just being there and having everything I need. But I think that's unfair on the MatePad Pro and this entire experience has taught me something about myself. So could I switch from the iPad Pro to the MatePad Pro from Huawei? No. However, that is not a fair reflection on the MatePad Pro because as lots of other reviewers have pointed out, this is a fantastic tablet. It's got an amazing design, a beautiful screen, the Harmony OS 4 operating system is fantastic as well, the pen is great, the keyboard's brilliant, it beats the iPad Pro in a number of areas. The problem for me, and I suspect a lot of people who are looking at this having come from an iPad, is that the iPad is so sticky. It's the ecosystem, it's the way that iPad OS works, and it gives you these kind of preconceptions about how a tablet experience should be. And that, again, isn't fair. And if I think about all of the apps that I rely on on the iPad to get stuff done, so things like Ulysses, Fantastical, Day One, they're all only available on iPad OS. They're not available on here. And if you add in all of Apple's own apps that I use, so things like Safari and Reminders and Notes, there's a very unfair balance here because I can't just switch from that to that easily. However, that is my fault. It's something that I think I need to work on in 2024. But we have one very important question. Who is it for? I think it's for anyone who's not stuck in the Apple ecosystem and for people who don't really like Apple, aren't bothered about the iPad, but they want a premium tablet experience. And for those people, I think this is the best alternative to the iPad Pro. But I'd love to know what you think about this MatePad Pro, so get involved down below. And if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I reveal what happened when I tried to go iPad only.